The sky is falling. The sky is falling. No, it's just meat falling from the sky. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. If you're outside right now watching this show on your phone as people have been known to do, look up. You see that big blue thing? That's called the sky, but if it's black and it's nighttime and there's little sparkly things in it, don't get scared, that's also the sky. And if uh, something wet is falling from that sky, uh, don't be scared, that's called rain. Uh, but if it's not rain, you should be scared. And that's what we're talking about today, y'all. It's time for That Ain't Rain, Man. That's a weird thing. All right, getting started with the first weird thing. Like, how often do you have yourself a cup of coffee and you think? Every morning. You know what I could use right now? Some non-dairy creamer powder. Uh, not Never, dairy. right? Who likes that stuff? If you like that stuff, please let us know. I'll take it if there's nothing else available. But if you lived in Chester, South Carolina in 1969, and let's face it, who didn't? True. Then that wish would have become a reality because occasionally over that period in 1969, the clouds of Chester would rain down white rain. Was that a sh was that it was a is that a hairspray? Is that what white rain is it's, or is it a band? It's a hairspray. Hmm. Band. It's neither. It's a hairband uh, spray. Uh, it's, it's a, a hairband hair that uses a hairspray. Well, it's just a hairspray. Anyway, spray. it was rain filled with non-dairy, not quite milky nasty stuff. But were they in the packets? Like <clears throat> packets falling from the sky? No, it was the stuff. Ah. Now, what was causing this? Was this some sort of secret corporate program to get people to think that non-dairy creamer is actually just natural and falls from the sky? And that's yes. why you should put it in your coffee? Yes. No, it wasn't. Uh, there was a company right outside of uh, Chester, Cremora. Basically, they made non-dairy creamer and they had these vents and they would get clogged with non-dairy creamer and then they would eventually release and they fart it out they like would fart out non-dairy creamer into the atmosphere and then it would get good. into the clouds and mix with the rain and come down and people would come out with their hey morning george and they come out with their coffee no they didn't actually do that uh morning joe oh come. i get it and uh and it would create this gunky white rain and it would also be in the dew so everybody wins uh they weren't necessarily happy about this and uh they were charged with Releasing Cremora beyond plant boundaries. <laughs> like that was on the law books already? Well, that's in quotes in, oh. in the research. Okay. Uh, and they were fined four, it only cost you $4,000 uh, to release your cream outside of the the, the boundaries. And so. if you gathered it, you didn't have Keep to Keep a boundary cream. around it, people. I got a good one for you. Jennings, Louisiana, 2007. Uh, one Eleanor Beale, a Jennings Police Department employee, was crossing the street going into uh, work, and she said, all of a sudden, things began falling from the sky. When I saw that they were crawling, I said, it's worms, get out of the way. <laughs> That's what I would have said. Now these worms were not of the gummy variety. So uh, don't get your hopes up here. She was being pelted by worm balls. Worm balls? Balls. Balls of worms. Of living worms. That's gotta keep uh, it straight here. Which once again blows my high school theory that the way to a woman's heart is through a worm's anus. It didn't happen, she was. She, she wasn't. She pleased. was appalled. She wasn't. She pleased. was not a. She was not pleased. She brought an employee out and said, "Look!" And the employee said, "Worms, <laughs> live worms." Um, what could this have been? The prevailing theory. It, get this. This is this is crazy. Give it to me, and this I'll get it. This is the prevailing theory. The only theory. Okay. A water spout was spotted five miles away near the Lacassine Bayou, and it sucked up all the earthworms and then dropped them on. Eleanor. You sucked them out of the ground? Or sucked them out of the water? The bayou. The bayou. I don't, I don't, I don't know the, an, an, the anatomy of a bayou. I, <laughs> the anatomy of a bayou with Link. I, I'll look into it later. But Accompanied by the music of white rain. A, a water, that's it, man. A water spout in 18, sucked it up. In 1867 in Bath County, Kentucky, there was the Kentucky Meat Shower. Now there's a series of jokes that could be made about this, but I'm gonna let you make them. I'm not going to make all the Kentucky meat shower jokes that you're thinking about right now. But what happened was for a period of several minutes, uh, pieces of meat began to fall from the sky into an area about 100 by 50 yards. These are big chunks of meat, like two inches square, 
some as big as four inches square. I mean, that's like palm-sized meat chunk. Man. Falling. And Light your grills. Now, you might say, oh, this is 1867. How do we know this happened? But multiple pu publications reported this, including the New York Times, Scientific American. So this actually happened. Hmm. Now, there were two gentlemen who were in the area who reported tasting the meat and judged it to be mutton or venison. Now, I know what you're thinking. Deer or sheep? Why, you know, if two, two gentlemen such as us are out and we see meat falling, why would we just begin to taste it? Well, what you didn't know. Never turn down a meat shower. What you don't know is that the meat shower was followed by a, a light misting of A1. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I'm just, I don't know I'm why they say. did it, because it was 1867 and if you got meat, you just ate it. I mean, uh, I can imagine the conversation. You taste it. So you taste it. The, no, you taste it. The royal, well, we both taste it. I don't know why the Royal Microscopical Society of Great Britain did a further medical examination. What, what, what were they doing in Bath County, Kentucky? I don't know, but they did. And they determined that the meat was, in fact, lung tissue from either a horse or a human baby. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, God. they re really narrowed it down. But why? Horse but, or baby, we but, can't tell. I, okay, that's what it was, but what, why was it in the sky, man? I have no idea. Don't don't tell me something this titillating and not tell me, give me a prevailing theory. Locals said that buzzards, who, as is their custom, seeing one of their companions disgorge himself, immediately followed suit. Meaning that they there were buzz buzzards that were vomited? feeding on babies. Baby lungs? Baby horses. No, babies or horses. Lungs, and they. I, I think what it was is there were vultures, and they when one vulture sees it, another vulture throw up, apparently they all begin to throw up. Like and, humans. That's, and that is the leading theory to this day. Vulture Vomit, my other favorite band. Brazil, 2013, uh, let's go there, where nightmares come to life. Hmm. All right, so imagine you're outside with some friends and you look up and you see what appears to be a curtain of spiders just raining down from the sky. They get like, and I'm not just talking tens or even hundreds, I'm talking thousands of spiders raining down from the sky. Well, this actually happened to Eric Reese and his friends in a small town out outside of Sao Paulo, Paulo Brazil. Um, he he posted this video Oy. and he, he zoomed in on spiders. Look, that's a real spider. He zoomed out oh, and it's gosh. just spiders everywhere. Um, they're kind of suspended in the air. This as, is the worst thing see. ever. No, this is not a marketing stunt for the upcoming release of Charlotte's Web 2, Revenge of the Spider Babies, which is gonna be great. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be great. Yeah, but talking spiders are not creepy, but non-talking that kind of spider is very creepy. Um, well, she also spelled in her web. Oh, spelling spiders. Um, nice. This phenomenon, as it turns out, it happens all over the world, and it's a species of spider that is social, and they create giant spider web structures uh, where thousands of them convene. Uh, so they're not technically raining down from the sky, they're just suspended in the sky. You I don't, don't care you how don't social walk they through. are. You don't want to walk through that with. I want them all to die. I don't care how social they are. But in other areas, um, and notably in Australia, there are smaller spiders that will do something called ballooning, which is they'll climb to a high area, stick their butts in the air, and <laughs> out a silk, and then it'll it'll take they'll take off like a parachute. Yeah, like a parachute, and they'll start flying through the air. So watch out for raining well. spiders. I hate that as in Brazil well. and Australia. In uh, 2015, Spanish goat farmers in Villa Vieja, Spain, were doing what they do best, farming goats, when all of a sudden they uh, stumbled upon a strange object, a weird metal sphere that looks a lot like an ITO interrogator from Star Wars. It does, yeah. Um, and then later that week, another mysterious ball landed somewhere in the same village, and then a third ball was found a few miles away, because sometimes balls come in threes. Count yourself lucky, fellas. Uh, the I, I said it looked like the ITO interrogator from uh, Star Wars, but then I realized I was looking at a picture of the interrogator. <laughs> yes, you were. It actually looks like like a hornet's nest. Yep. What is it? Okay, so it's three feet wide, 44 pounds. Uh, the locals call them bolas especial. Space balls. Space balls. Yes. Uh, and then they sent a, an official out to examine them. Here is the official examining them. He, as you can see, has on protective gear. Oh, he goes yeah. out, discovers that it is not radioactive, it is not poisonous, it is not explosive, and so they do what you're supposed to do when you find that. They just put it in the back of a truck and went off with it. See, there it is. But um, Brett, what is it? Okay, well, this definitive proof of aliens, Link. That's what it is. Okay, I got another one. Moving right along. No, it's not definitive proof of aliens. They oh. think that it's discarded fuel tanks from a space station, which really freaks me out because when you say a space station, I'm like, 
I thought there was the space station. Is there other space stations up there that are dropping balls? Black balls. And, and, we, and now we're finding out about it? There's Goat farmers are finding out about it? What kind of world do we live in? Ones where space stations blackball us. Huh, hidden ones. I'm afraid. That's why I'm gonna move on. Okay. Uh, sadly, this is not much better. In Woodenville, Washington, October 18th, 1992, Jerry and Leroy Cinnamon, yes, their last name is oh. Cinnamon, were watching a football game in their home when all of a sudden, something came crashing through their roof and Leroy said, I expected to see Superman soar through the hole. Not my first thought, Leroy but okay, Cinnamon. whatever. Um, Lives in a fantasy world. It was actually a bunch of baseball-sized chunks of greenish ice. Hmm. Could have been kryptonite, but then it melted, and they began noticing some sort of scent, a oh. smell, if you will. A hey, pine scent? Hey, Jerry, come, come smell this green ice. It started to smell because it was frozen doo-doo balls of human waste. <laughs> Green, doo -doo frozen doo-doo balls of human waste. Uh, I, hopefully they didn't taste it like that. You taste it. You taste it. I don't, I don't think they did that. I think that. it might be mutton. The FAA confirmed, can you guess, FAA's involved? It came from a plane. Came from a plane. Um, I've always wondered that every time I flush in the toilet. It, it goes to the cinnamon's house. Yeah, right. Right there. You're pooping on the cinnamon. That's the euphemism for, for flushing a toilet on a plane. <laughs> Straight to the cinnamon's house. <laughs> It was frozen human waste from a leaky United Airlines sewage system. Uh, Leroy said, it's a good thing none of us was killed. What would you put on the tombstone? Cool. Well, I got a few ideas. Like what? I came, I saw, I got crapped on. <laughs> Death by dookie balls. Death, yeah, there you go. Frozen dookie balls. I don't know. That's, that's uh, uh, Frenzy. What's the Vulture? What's the band's name? Uh, Vulture Vomit. Vulture Vomit's album, Death by Dookie Balls. Mm. Pick it up now at Target. Thanks. Exclusively. <laughs> Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. You know what time it is. I'm Martin. I'm Haney. And we're in Hong Kong Disneyland. And it's time to spin the Wheel, Wheel of, of Mythicality. Mythicality. Rhett's Beard Oil, that's me, and Link's Peanut Butter Peppermint Lip Balm don't fall from the sky because there would probably be some sort of lawsuit if they did, but you can find them at rhettlink.com slash store. And at your doorstep, and they'll hit your lips or your beard in a satisfying way. Wow. It's like through to Good Mythical More, where we're gonna play a video game. It is a squirrel suit. Uh, simulator. <laughs> <laughs> a flying squirrel suit. Brett just remembered something. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Trigger, 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 trigger. Oh! 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 You made it! I'm still alive! There's no way that would ever happen yes, in real life! Yes, it does happen!